So, just a few hours ago, the team behind LTX dropped a massive update, LTX2, and this isn't just a minor patch, it's a serious step forward in the AI video generation race. They've made some huge improvements, pushing clip lengths up to 10 seconds, adding support for 4K, and, this is the big one, generating video with synchronized audio right out of the box. What? <laughs> Bring it on. You said milk made from oats? This is a feature we've seen with models like Veo 3, and it's clear the competition in the AI video space is heating up fast. In this video, we're going to do a deep dive. I'll show you some of the initial examples, both the good and the not so good. Then we'll break down all the new features under the hood. And finally, I'm going to throw some of my own complex prompts at it to see where it shines and where it breaks. Most importantly, I'll show you exactly how you can get your hands on this and test it out completely for free right now. So let's get into it. First, let's move on to some real user generations. In this first clip, we see a character walking through a busy market. The generation is solid, but if you look closely, you'll spot some minor flaws. With this many people moving around, you start to see some weird artifacts, which is common in AI video. And watch what happens when the camera zooms out and pulls up. Everyone just freezes in place. It's a small glitch, but it's there. Now check out this next clip. We have a girl in a full dress who hears a gunshot and panics. As she starts running, pay attention to her clothes. The trousers she was wearing suddenly gone, and then morph into tights. It's a classic AI continuity error. These are the kinds of small imperfections we're still seeing. In this other generation, there's a noticeable audio sync issue. Why did you do this to me? Who even is she? <sighs> She's the one I really love. The sound of the door closing is way too loud for how gently she shut it. Also, her performance feels off. She's supposed to be angry at the guy, but she's not even looking at him. Plus, there's this unnatural hissing sound in the background. It's not perfect yet, but these are the things we're here to test. All right, let's talk specs, because this is where it gets really interesting. LTX2 generates audio and video simultaneously in a single model, including sound effects and music. They're boasting 4K fidelity at up to 50 frames per second, with clips as long as 10 seconds for now, with plans to extend that to 15. They're also claiming it's incredibly cost-efficient, with a 50% lower compute cost than comparable models, which hopefully means it will eventually run on consumer-grade GPUs. And here's the kicker. They're promising to make it open source. The model weights and code aren't out yet, but they've slated the release for late November 2025. For now, the API is live, and it comes in a few flavors. There's a fast model for quick, cheap generations, and a pro model for better quality. An ultra version for true 4K at 50 FPS with VFX is also on the way. You can feed it text, images, videos, or even just audio to generate a scene. It has a ton of creative controls like multi-keyframe conditioning and 3D camera logic, and will support LoRa fine-tuning. For now, it's only 16 by 9 aspect ratio, but portrait mode is coming soon and it's set to be integrated into Comfy UI as well. Now for the part you've been waiting for, the price and how to use it for free. The cost is incredibly low, at just 0.04 cents per second of generation. That means a five second clip costs you only 20 cents. To try it yourself, just head over to ltx.studio. They have a free plan that gives you a one-time grant of 800 free credits to test everything out and a little pro tip, since you can sign up with a simple email, you can use temporary email services to create multiple accounts, giving you a nearly endless supply of free credits to play with while this promotion lasts. Once you log in, the interface is straightforward. You can choose text to video or image to video, select the fast or pro model, pick your duration up to 10 seconds, and even choose your resolution, including 4K. Okay, enough talk. Let's put this thing to the test. For my first prompt, which I'll put up on the screen, I'm asking for a character who is scared and delivers a line with hesitation. I've set it to the fast model, 10 seconds, 1080p, and 25 FPS. The generation speed is impressive. This 10 second clip was done in about a minute. Let's see the result. 
Don't make a sound. It can hear us. Okay, so you can see it jumped the gun and had to deliver the dialogue immediately. It didn't follow the prompt's direction to show being scared first and then speaking. The camera work and expressions aren't quite right either. That said, the overall visual quality is actually pretty good. For comparison, here's the same prompt run through Veo 3.1. Don't make a sound. It can hear us. You can see how Veo handles the pacing and the emotional buildup much more effectively. But don't make a sound. It can hear us. All right, let's give it another prompt, which you'll see on the screen now. The settings are the same, 10 seconds at 1080p on the fast model. One thing to note is that on the free plan, you could only generate one video at a time, but the good news is it's generating very quickly. Let's take a look. When were you gonna tell me? Or were you ever gonna tell me at all? <sighs> wow, okay, this generation is amazing. It followed the prompt perfectly. You see the camera slowly push in, the rain effects look great, and then the man suddenly yells his line in frustration. The execution of the scene is incredibly impressive. Let's try a third prompt, again, keeping the settings the same. The result is here, and we're seeing a similar issue to the first test. This kingdom will not fall. Not today. It starts the dialogue way too early without building any cinematic atmosphere. However, the dialogue delivery itself is very natural. It doesn't sound like a robotic text-to-speech voice at all. It sounds like an actor delivering a line. That's a huge plus for a fast and cheap model. Now, for a really tough one. This is a complex prompt that even Veo 3.1 struggled with, and Sora 2 handled only slightly better. Every piece was there. I could see them all but none of them fit together. Every piece was there. I could see them all, but none of them fit together. I specifically asked for the scene to be in slow motion. Let's see the output. Every piece was there. I could see them all, but none of them fit together. The visual quality isn't quite on par with Veo 3.1. Also, it completely ignored the slow motion instruction, so it still has a long way to go for these highly nuanced and complex requests. Let's move on to the next test, another complex prompt, which you can see on the screen now. This one's for a high stakes Mayday call. Let's see the result. Mayday, Mayday, I've lost crackle stabilization. The hull is... I'm reading a full breach. Okay, as you probably saw, this generation really wasn't great. The expression on the character's face just doesn't sell the situation. A Mayday call should be incredibly intense, full of fear or desperation. But this performance feels flat and not very compelling. It's clear that capturing that level of specific high-stakes emotion is still a major challenge for this model. All right, let's give it one more complex prompt before we move on. I'll display it on the screen for you. I've run the same prompt through Sora and Veo 3.1, so we have a good baseline for comparison. Let's check out the generation. Ha has anybody seen my mommy? <laughs> has anybody seen my mommy? Has anybody seen my mommy? Has anybody seen my mommy? Okay, now this is interesting. It's not a bad generation. Visually, it's quite good, but there's a slight lack of genuine emotion and it does something very strange with the dialogue. If you remember the results from Sora and Veo 3.1, the character delivered his line just once. Here, he says the dialogue, pauses for a moment as if thinking, and then says the exact same line again, just with slightly more intensity. It's a very strange quirk, but it's a fascinating look into how the model is interpreting the prompt. Things got really interesting when I tried a prompt with dialogue between two different people on a phone call. 
This is a challenge that Veo 3.1 completely failed. At this point, I had run out of my initial credit, so I logged into a new account, grabbed my 800 free credits, see, the trick works, and ran the prompt again. This time, I switched to the higher quality pro model. Okay, the generation is done. You can see it correctly created a split screen with both people on the phone, but let's check the dialogue. Just calling to remind you not to be late. The reservation is at seven. And do try to wear something that isn't actively on fire. I'll be there. I just have to figure out which of my flaming ensembles best says my brother is a control. And nope. The female voice actor read both the male and female lines. So it's clear the model can't handle multi-speaker dialogue in a single clip. Just calling to remind you not to be late. The reservation is at seven. And do try to wear something that isn't actively on fire. Oh, don't you worry your just calling to remind you not to be late. The reservation is at seven. And do try to wear something that isn't actively on fire. Oh, don't you worry, you're ridiculously organized little- For fun, I ran the classic Will Smith eating spaghetti test. The result was fascinating. Instead of Will Smith, it generated a clip of a very famous food vlogging YouTuber. This gives us a little clue as to the kind of data this model was trained on. <laughs> To test censorship, I prompted, Elon Musk and Sam Altman are having fun at a beach. It generated two random guys, and the physics were completely broken. <laughs> they jump and just kind of float before falling, so it's not great with real-world physics yet. Finally, I wanted to test image to video. I uploaded a generated image of Elon Musk with a model and gave it the simple prompt, couple is kissing passionately. Let's see. Okay, the result isn't bad at all. Because the source image was square, it zoomed in. It added some nice background music, though not the specific sound effects of a kiss. You can see some slight facial warping when he moves, but overall, it handled the prompt. So for image to video, it seems to be a pretty capable tool. So what's my final verdict on LTX2? It's a solid and much improved model. The generation speed is great, the cost is low, and for simple prompts with a single speaker, you can get some fantastic results. However, it still struggles with complex instructions, physics, and multi-speaker scenes. The ability to test it extensively for free using the credit trick is a massive bonus. It represents a huge leap for the open source community, bringing us one step closer to having powerful, accessible video generation tools. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive. If you found it helpful, drop a like and a comment, and I'll see you in the next video.